good morning and I'm here in just outside Selscombe with Jonathan Haightley. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Sunday morning so we're, we're both a bit like you, yeah, just waking up. Yeah. <laughs> um, the reason we've decided to come and do this interview really is because you've had quite a fundamental shift in the place and mm. therefore the way in which you work. Do you want to tell us a bit about that, where you worked before and... Well, I was working in a cow shed, um, <laughs> and, uh, and whilst it was only 15 minutes from my home, it was obviously renting from a, a farmer, and it wasn't exactly the best place to work. Um, you even did a health and safety did. <laughs> um, analysis of the place, which I think it was all right in the end, but it, there were some dodgy things about it, like ladders that... Uh, Flooring, I the, think, was one of the biggest problems, wasn't it? Because it was a cow shed. Well, it was, free, <laughs> it was freezing cold, that's for sure. <laughs> um, and we had lorries going past every five oh, minutes. Oh, and that ladder so. up to the mezzanine. Yeah, that's what I was saying, <gasps> which I found perfectly fine, but uh, um, you saw us problems with it. Um, <clears throat> so, so, in the fullness of time, we decided to look for a new house to live in, we wanted to move further south after dismissing the idea of Wales and um, some other strait, even Scotland at one stage, I think. Um, so we've come to, yeah, settles come, and never imagined that we'd end up with three acres of land. Um, although we bought it, not knowing whether we could use these barns as a, a studio or not, because um, it involved a change of use. And um, and yeah, it, it, it went it went well. They they agreed to us um, using these barns as a art studio, and and I think by um, the end of February or something, we'd finished one of the barns for me to sculpt in, and um, and uh, and I've started working in there. You'd been in Pensas for a long time, hadn't you? Um, yeah, about six six or seven years I think mm. Um, mm. and and before then um, an even smaller place which didn't have any windows so at least at that place we could open the doors wide and um, and have lunches in the field behind us so it, it wasn't an awful place to work um, but well, you and I went for some lovely walks around the woods and in the grounds didn't we yeah at crucial times at crucial times <laughs> um, working through Issues. Issues around sculpting. <laughs> yeah, so so it was a good place for me to work um, for a good period of time, but I felt the the energy of that place was starting to sort of plateau and I needed a change, and this place has sort of rekindled that energy and, and um, I'm feeling great about yeah. being here. There was a really nice pub. There was the a very nice pub. Can't lie. And, um, there was a nice pub near the other, near the other <laughs> studio that we used. We went a couple of times for Christmas, didn't we? Lunches. Yeah. With the, with everyone. Well, there's a few pubs. Right there's there, a few right? pubs around here too, so it's okay. Yeah. And we, the we found we found a new one, haven't we? The dog at Ewhurst that we quite like. Yeah. And the seaside, indeed, because you were in Tum you were living in Tunbridge. Yeah. At that time, and it started to become apparent. I think just before COVID, didn't it, that a move might be a good idea? Yes, because we were even looking during COVID, which mm. wasn't easy mm. um, at the time, um, getting appointments and what have you. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, that, that was made more clearly during that time when we had, we had to work in the, we had a um, summer house at the bottom of the garden and uh, we, we we started. I start, started sculpting in there. Well, first in the sunroom in our house, which became very very hot, and started drying the clay out. But I, I was doing two pieces at the same time at home during that period, and um, one of them, which is behind you, um, uh, it was uh, intertwined. 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 And uh, it just went through one stage after another of. of um, being difficult because I wasn't in my normal environment and then when we decided we could go back to the studio um, I had the prospect of 
putting it in the car. And I had measured it to make sure that it, that it would be able to fit in, but um, didn't count on the fact that being out of my studio, the, the armature hadn't been particularly perfect, and, um, uh, and it's never ideal to move something really, but plenty of people do. But as soon as I'd got a few um, miles down the road, the whole thing collapsed because it's a, a man carrying the woman and um, he was no longer carrying her. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, that was a... It's a man observing a, a woman, not yeah. quite <laughs> connected. Yeah. So, uh, and th this sort of thing's happened before, even, even in the studio. But, um, yeah. Because you sculpt in clay. Sculpt in clay on a metal armature. Um, but in, in the early days, um, uh, I can remember getting uh, Serena to come from uh, her work in her suit uh, to come and hold oh, something. I'm sure that didn't go down very well. So she was holding something in the process of falling apart um, while I welded it while she was in her lovely suit. And uh, I think it was all right in the end, but that's the sort You're of still thing. still married, is all I can yeah. say. <laughs> She obviously put up with that. <laughs> Fortunately, Serena has also embraced the move down here and now works principally from home as well, so no more suits, so we're okay. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and she's the most supportive person you could have in a relationship where being a sculptor involves all this sort of nonsense. <laughs> um, I know, I remember when I first met the pair of you, some years ago now, and we were in the powder mills, weren't we? And you came yeah. for one of my surgeries of, you know, if you've got a problem, come come sit with me for 20 minutes. A bit like a politician, but nicer, I hope. And you came, and, I, and Serena was still working up in London at the time. I think you were wanting to, or Serena was wanting to stop doing that. And you sat down, and you just, you'd only just recently stopped working in London too, for the big... Yeah. For, uh, commercial artwork for TV and what have you. Mm. And you wanted um, to do this transition across, and we said, actually, you make a perfect, perfect couple to work. If Serena can do the admin, which she's absolutely brilliant at, and you do the sculpture, well, it you, should be a marriage made in heaven. You saw me as the incredibly sensitive type that wouldn't deal with all the business side of it. And, Was I wrong? Uh, no. <laughs> um, um, Serena. Um, Very practical. <laughs> For some reason, Serena had always, um, for some strange reason, wanted to help me through my work, and um, and without her, you know, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. I don't think. Um, so yeah, it's um, so the fact that we're here together and she's able to bring the teas across every now and again when I'm sculpting, um, that that's made it, uh, you know, a, a grounded place to be. Yeah, and also, because you've got the grounds, which are absolutely stunning, it also gives Serena that opportunity to explore something for herself, and I know that she's mm. wanted to explore the lavender fields, and you've been jointly sorting out the orchard and everything. Mm. Mm. And growing stuff as well. And growing and veg. So, uh, yeah, you become yeah. like the good life. It is. It's the good life. It is. <laughs> <laughs> but you've now got these two purpose-built spaces that you've... Um, had fitted out for yourself. We're in the one where a lot of the kind of work after the sculpt has been cast. Yes, yeah, so these are all in various um, um, points of progress so that they all get painted in here when a cast comes in and we actually put them on the plinths in here as well and then paint them and then, um, I mean I, I wish there was another room for this but we then have to spray them so the whole place is shielded off with plastic and what have you, and a tunnel Always of. Need more space. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, so we, we we do all that with compressors in here and um, extraction, and yeah, it's it, it means that we're not doing it with other people in the room and, and so on and so forth. So for health and safety, it's good because that's what yeah. we had the problem with in the last year. Mm. Is everything went on in yeah. one space, and that's not very good. It's not healthy. So this is great, and you can you can have uh, Sue painting in here, and you can be in your other studio. Yeah, working which what tends to happen, and, and which is the only slightly strange thing that I am used to having people in the room around me, and, and it's very often that my assistant is in here on her own too. Um, 
but um, we're, we're getting used to it every yeah. day. Yeah, everything everything changes, doesn't it? When you move and the new normal, you have to establish your new normal. Mm. So the other studio, which we're going to go and have a walk in in a minute, is where you where all the creative um, aspect of the sculpting happens. So you do talk us through that, how that works from generating the initial idea to starting to create an armature. Hmm. Mm. Big question. Yeah, because a lot of the time it doesn't happen anywhere other than wherever I happen to have the idea and and, um, and they're important to me and sometimes it drives me mad that I don't have an idea to go in there and start drawing um, and sometimes you'll be I don't know in the bath or in the, <laughs> in the um, or in the field. You'll be in the bath, no, <laughs> no, no, that would be strange. That would be really odd. <laughs> uh, the, the the idea will just drop into my head, and um, that that's an exciting time because it it means you can you start getting this creative buzz that you want to get in there and start something. But um, we've I'm, had conversations quite a lot about how the ideas come over the years, haven't we? And sometimes mm. when you've got, oh, I'm never going to have another idea in my life, yeah. and I've got creative block. And I said, go back to look at a piece and think where that idea came from. And often it's from a story or a book or a place you've been or walking in the woods or whatever, and they just come. Yeah, yeah, they can. I mean, certainly certain mm. pieces of, but but even with that. The, the idea came to use the book or whatever yeah. and it's it's that difficulty but having sort of feeling on a flow of doing these figures with this texture on them to me it's really important that the texture means something and that, that it's saying something about either nature or, or the human state or both. It tells a story um, doesn't it? The texture tells the story. As much, is as much the narrative. Yeah, that's what I hope, and it feels very strange to do something without any real reason for it. And so it's that that, you know, I start thinking how how many times can I do this, where it, whereas it really feels for me a, a, a strong idea needs to come into my head that justifies doing the sculpt mm -hmm. in the first place. Mm -hmm. and, but when, when that does happen, then the most wonderful place to be is in that room because I just get excited about doing a drawing of what I, I've envisaged and um, and then I can just keep going and, until all the other doubts start coming in and um, you, you question everything that went on before. But, yeah, <laughs> and we have lots of conversations, don't we, sitting in the garden or walking around the fields about how to stay in flow and how to stay grounded with mm. that idea so that it doesn't um, eat you up and destroy you and so you don't actually get the outcome. But And you you like to do this kind of pairs, although I'm looking around and seeing lots of singular, you know, sunrise and sunset, transience and faith, there's, there's often a narrative around the duality of mm. an idea as well, isn't there? It, yes, certainly the sunset and sunrise came mm. together. Others will come from um, that you've been really pleased with a particular piece and therefore you, you don't feel that story has finished so you want to extend so it. So like with standing the fall and the, then the bigger pieces and the smaller pieces all in a very yeah. similar yeah. series. It's, something, it's usually if you've really enjoyed it, making it yourself that you want to do it again. Um, I don't like repeating the same thing in, in smaller versions but I, I like extending the idea and mm. I guess autumn leaves has been a, a theme that's carried through. Um, but Especially uh, now. Although at the <clears> moment you're working on a piece that is influenced by the sea. Well I finished that one. Have you finished but I haven't had, oh, we're waiting for the cast to come back. So talk to me about that, just that little element of it. So you finished the piece, you've, we've gone through the process and you've sculpted the piece and then you you make the cast for the piece here uh, generally or is that now being outsourced that's well we make the mold first the mold and um, so we're doing that and um, a very difficult thing for me to get used to is outsourcing that the but it's, no the the casting mm -hmm. um, the molding is a difficult thing to relinquish not only 
because you've got to move the stop somewhere else mm. or have somebody come over here but um, just because if anything goes wrong with the sculpture and um, you know it doesn't happen very often but it, it, to me it feels as though I've got to do that, that part um, it might change over time I don't know but at the moment I'm clinging hold of making the mould um, and sending that mould out it is now similar to if you send the mould out either for a bronze or a resin and it's getting done elsewhere and so the, I'm able to concentrate on the more creative side of it. Mm. But at the moment you still feel the moulding aspect is an integral part of your touching of the final piece. Yeah, well I, I mean, the thing with clay is that even um, in the process of moulding you can start to get cracks because you want it to be as moisture free as it can be without coming you know forming cracks mm -hmm. and um, uh, I, I, I at least if I'm doing it myself I can make sure everything's all right and um, and whilst you know I may not be the best mole maker in the world I just feel that doing it myself is necessary at the moment mm -hmm. it's sort of the last thing I, I will want to let go of I guess perhaps it's still you touching it until it yeah. gets to the point where someone else will now cast it for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you've also recently, now that you've got your own space, you've been inviting other people into your space to do live drawing. I have, and it's making me keep the, the, the workshop or studio as tidy as I possibly can all through the month, and then we have this crazy clearing up process to enable a, a model to come and lie or sit in at one end of the, the room and uh, probably about four or five artists all crammed together and what it what turns out is it's quite a small space when you're trying to do live drawing but, quite we, a big space. <laughs> but we all gather in there and um, yeah it's been really good and it makes if I'm not doing anything creative at the time like I'm putting things on plinths or whatever it gives me another outlet for creativity and it's a very difficult thing to do as well. I think we all we all say that whenever we go. That um, um, especially if you haven't done it for ages, it's it's like a, a muscle that needs exercising mm -hmm. fairly regularly. Um, mm -hmm. And for somebody who's doing figurative work, um, figure drawing, life drawing is very important. Mm. And how do you feel about having other artists in your studio space? Um, Oh, it's great because it feels as though I'm, we are on a sort of a little isolated where we are and to actually have visitors is nice but to have artists come and and draw with me is is really is really good mm. yeah. do you think that will help you stay in flow and keep the ideas flowing by regularly doing this live drawing and mixing with a group of artists regularly yeah I, th I think so I think it's it's good it, I, I mean it's good to I have a model pose because you never know what that might spark mm -hmm. but um, it's also good being with creative people and um, you know sharing that space for a few hours and, um, and seeing what um, I mean we don't really have a look at each other's work although people are being, are being a little bit more open as time goes on so but at the beginning it was draw something and then hide it all away and <laughs> disappear at the end of the day. But um, yeah, we're getting a bit more relaxed about it now. Yeah, it takes a little while, doesn't it, when you do something new like that to get comfortable with other people and mm. get comfortable enough to share um, and to get comfortable with the fact that you've got that muscle back in yeah. tune so that you're like, okay, I'm all right to share this now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you think other there are other... Of things like that, life drawing, so maybe some still life drawing or some doing things out on the grounds that you would like to do? Well, we did uh, with Louisa Crispin um, the first one of the, or the second time we got together when we didn't have a model. We we did these the walk around the grounds and mm. did these uh, little two or three minute drawings of whatever we saw at that given moment, and that was a great thing to do. So, we'd like to do that again. Um, so, yeah, I'm sure different things can happen as we get more established here. It'd be nice when um, Serena's planted up the lavender. 
Yeah, if, if it did happen. So, so we'll encourage, to we'll encourage her to plant the lavender, <laughs> and then that will get, it'll smell lovely. Yeah. And it'll be a beautiful short, and it'll attract in some amazing, and Louisa will be down here all the time, because it, it'll attract an amazing array of insects and yeah. wildlife, won't it? So, yeah. yeah. No, that sounds lovely. Thank you so much for sharing your new studio with us. Thank you. You're welcome.